it's time to talk about thaumaturgy. That's right, blood magic. Now, thaumaturgy is a secret carefully guarded by the Tremere. And then later, they just started just dumping it on everyone. Everyone that they could think of. It's like, oh, you're not the Camarilla? <laughs> Let's put thaumaturgy on you because we've run out of ideas. So we saw that later on in the uh, line of Vampire the Masquerade. And in Vampire the Masquerade, we see the evolution of thought there that's being put in. We see the original discipline of thaumaturgy that was created by Mark Ryan Hagen just splinter off into bizarre permutations. Of course, one of the big problems, canically speaking, with vampire is the original vampire books took place in modern times, which is like uh, 1991. But then you have the going backwards effect because enormous amounts of information were created after the fact to say, oh, actually, really, this is what happened before. It was all like this. And of course, none of that stuff actually happened before uh, in the canon of Vampire the Masquerade. There were essentially ideas uh, of, of, of how it was put together. And if you want to know more about how Vampire the Masquerade was put together, you can watch my first interview with Mark Ryan Hagen where we actually go over the, the actual ways that Vampire the Masquerade was put together. So, besides that, you have this idea of the sorcery of the blood continuing to evolve. And of course, yes, in, in the current days, there's Asamites and Setites. Uh, I guess they actually gave a different name for the uh, Je Messie. I, I quite wish they would have pushed the Asamite and Setite uh, blood magic off, made it more uh, more different. Than, than the thaumaturgical stuff that it, it really kind of is. But let's not get into that. That's really not what we're going to talk about. We want to talk about the discipline itself, and essentially Clan Tremere. It is the providence of Clan Tremere. Clan Tremere can become very, very upset at you if you have thaumaturgy. Trust me, I've been reading a lot about Clan Tremere recently. And they don't want you to have their secrets, and they will come and get you and make it so that you no longer have their secrets. This is typically done in one of one ways. And I'll let you guess what way that is. It is considered a abominable, typically, for other vampires to have such secrets. Of course, there are numerous elders that have, through various favors and boons and so forth, been able to cajole certain occult teachings. Still, the... Tremere are very unified and are unlikely to want to teach individuals outside their clan these secrets. So you should always keep in mind when you're putting together a thaumaturge to just say, I'm all caving or gangrel, that that might be a trash idea. So uh, this should really be thought of carefully. Even if another character has even but one dot, that could be a tremendous, tremendous story. That could be the whole thing where they're not like, ah, I got five dots of thaumaturge. And I was like, shut your mouth. Um, there were, of course, some questionable things early on where you saw, well, I, I would just say fairly poorly written NPCs in the game like uh, Alistair Crowley, who was, I think, a sixth generation Malkavian with, uh, I think he had thaumaturgy. If I am remembering correctly, I'm not going to go dig those tomes out at the current time. But the discipline of thaumaturgy is extremely interesting because it, it does not work like other disciplines. They have sort of backwritten necromancy to uh, come off like thaumaturgy. Necromancy, which originally appeared, was far dissimilar from thaumaturgy. It was essentially really more just a normal sort of discipline that happened to be death magic. But they have backwritten it with rituals and with different paths and so forth, particularly after the Dark Ages came out and they saw all the, the mortis discipline of the Cappadocians. So with thaumaturgy, you have something that you don't have with other disciplines like celerity or presence, they have something called paths and they have something called rituals. Now, thaumaturgy starts with essentially any path of the player's choosing. It is typical, though not necessary, for the character to take the path of blood. Now, the path of blood has a lot of the secrets that are the archetype of the Tremere. The tasting of the blood, the, the pulling of the blood like the legacy of Cain right out of your body. Of course, that itself can be quite a breach of the masquerade. Be careful when and if you use such a thing. You can also get yourself blood bond doing that. You can burn the blood to a cauldron, and that can provide a very interesting scene. Certainly something that's going to kill your average human quite quickly. 
Imagine, if you will, your blood being on fire. Yes, it would be a horrendous way to die. Certainly not something that you are just going to no-sell. You're not going to go, hey, dodge, don't attack. No, you go, ah, and you die. That's what happens to you. Um, so Thaumaturgy itself is, is quite powerful. But it's the flexibility. It's the unpredictability of Thaumaturgy that is the real power. Again, Tremere are not out there educating you on what Thaumaturgy does. They do not want you to know. And there's a large number of different paths any given Tremere could take that inflexibility makes it very hard to prepare for Clan Tremere. It's not like they're Clan Bruja with presence, potence, and celerity. You could pretty much see what you're getting. Sure, Bruja might have out-of-clan out of discipline here or there, but that's the backbone, disciplinely speaking, of that clan. Tremere, Thaumaturgy can really be all over the place. You can have Lura Flame to burn them with magical fire. They have a similar path that does lightning. They have a Neptune's Might and a, several different paths of Spirit Thaumaturgy. Wow, you know, they could really bring out some real interest there. So you buy your base path, and then for a, a less cost than you would otherwise have to pay for disciplines, you could take additional paths. This means you could essentially have more... Uh, I'm not going to call them disciplines, but let's say more discipline power, a broader spectrum of disciplines than another character would of an equal uh, dot cost because your cost is less. This allows to reflect the flexibility of Clan Shmir, the flexibility of blood magic. Now, additionally, you have rituals, and the rituals are basically your little magic spells. The thaumaturgical paths themselves, each dot is pretty tight on what it does, and there's some paths that don't do anything different. Movement of the mind, one to five, does exactly the same thing. It's just more and more weight that you can add to it. You have that telekinesis. I think when you have three dots, you can fly. So that that's an example. Lure of Flames is the same thing. It does. It, it has greater aspects of effect, but every dot one to five still does the same thing. It's magic fire. Now, uh, Path of Blood, for example, does different things at one to five. And let's not even worry about a six and beyond. We'll just stay with the core basic focus of a five dot discipline array. And that is really what you get with this is an array because you can have a, just a battery of powers to batter down your opponents. And that can be very, very, very useful. They have uh, abilities like Path of Conjuring. And they're really all over the place. There are a ton of books right here in my lap. I have uh, my Vampire Revised. This is from the special deluxe super edition that uh, I have hard cases back for to put these deals in but uh it's in there it's right in here in the camarella books so you have more paths they have two whole books that are just about thaumaturgy yes i have a bookmark because i've been doing some more brushing up so you have these different uh thaumaturgy you know uh blood magic secrets of thaumaturgy and blood sacrifices the thaumaturgy companion that's two books right there so there's an enormous amount of actual crunch and white wolf is a very soft game in terms of crunch. You know, they give you tons and tons and tons of flavor, textualizing, and meta plot in books that often uh, books like this are, are a bit rarer, though there's, again, a lot of uh, flavor and meta plotting in these books. There's still a pretty good amount of crunch for designing these different rituals. Uh, a ritual is a singular of vampire power. The Thaumaturgy paths, they use different roles. I think all Thaumaturgy uses willpower, you roll your willpower. And if you botch, you lose your willpower. And the rituals themselves, they use a cult plus intelligence. So you still have that sort of traditional Dungeons and Dragons wizard style of deal where you're casting the spells. You have the intellect, you have the occult, and you're, you're going through it in that way. Uh, ritual itself does one thing, like wards versus ghouls, or a circle of warding against ghouls, or wards against spirits, or demons, or, or uh, what have you. It may allow you to trans teleport yourself out to uh, what is it, escape to the escape to a true friend, teleport yourself away to, to a friend. Though they often have heavily uh, difficult material components. That spell, for example, ritual, you have to step into a circle that has already been pre burnt into the ground, which means you have to prepare that, and you do. And it explains system wise. You can't just be like, and I'm out. You have to step into it and get away, and you. you you definitely have to be in the right place at the right time, and hopefully that you weren't in the uh, the wrong room of the building when it exploded. But 
They provide with with the paths, with the baseline thaumaturgy, and with the large number of rituals, it provides for a tremendous amount of flexibility. You can turn the powers of your opponents back upon them. You can make sure that they know that you, in fact, are their superior, for you are Tremere, and blood magic is yours to command, and yours to command alone. 